a six pack by any other name. I was in the army way back when the internet was new and computer illiterate commanding officers had their clerks print out emails so he could read them. As a young private, after work me and my buddies would often stop by the class. Six store on post an army liquor store to buy beer after we got off duty. One day me and my buddy grabbed a 12 pack of beers on the way to the barracks. When we got to the barracks, we had to pass the CQ. CQ charge of quarters basically a guard posted at the entrance to the barracks. The CQ that day was a specialist E4 who I really didn't get along with. He was mad he had to pull CQ duty. Duty and he was always trying to find everyone's stupid infractions. He had taken a special interest in me for some reason. The CQ told us we could only bring six beers into the barracks. Since he was an E4, and outranked myself E2 and my friend, friend E3. I was very respectful when I asked him what he meant. He pulled out a three ring binder with the barracks SOP standard operating procedure and pointed. Pointed to the section that said a soldier could bring only six beers into the barracks. Interesting. I thought about handing my friend six beers and taking six myself to get around this stupid rule. But this. This guy would log that we open the 12 pack of beer outdoors in the log book and we'd get in trouble anyway. But then I had an interesting idea. I thanked the CQ and told my friend to come on. We walked back to class 6 and got a refund on the beer. Then we bought 6 40 ounce bottles of malt liquor. We went from 144 fluid ounces of beer with 12 12 ounce cans to 240 fluid ounces of malt liquor and 6 40 ounce bottles. When we returned to the barracks, the CQ wanted to inspect our package. He just about hit the ceiling when he, he saw I was carrying 6 40 ounce bottles. CQ I told you you can only bring 6. Into the barracks me there are 6 beers in here. I can count them off if you like. I then proceeded to count them before he could respond. Flustered, he allowed us to proceed. The next morning the first sergeant highest ranking non-commissioned officer in the company called me to his office. He yelled at me for about 5 full minutes before he calmed down long enough to tell. Tell me I was getting an article 15 non-judicial punishment roughly the military equivalent of a plea bargain. Why? Because I violated his SOP by bringing 6 40 ounce beers into his barracks. That was when I heard the CO commanding officer, A, captain in the next office over call for the first sergeant. First sergeant jumped up and went straight to the CO's office. I strained to hear them talking for a few minutes. From what I could make out, they were, were reviewing the SOP and comparing to the CQ log. But their voices got louder as they started expressing different views and I could hear that part clearly first. But it says clearly you can have a six pack of beers CO first sergeant. It says you can have six beers. First sergeant but it's obvious it means. A beer CO no first sergeant it's not obvious. Send that soldier back to work. We're done here a couple of seconds later I could feel the sheer anger as. Sergeant came back in my office and bellowed get the fuck out of here so I did. Boss said I still need to come in after I explained I wouldn't be attending work due to a family member being in severe condition. I said okay, my family and I are close. My brother had a sudden and severe medical emergency over the weekend. It's really affected everyone knowing my brother nearly died. Those of us who intervened and provided medical aid are traumatized. On Monday, I realized that my mother was struggling with a distress and, and was unable to handle much of the decisions when she was at the hospital. My family member's condition was stable but there was some concerning news arising. I needed to be there for my family. Well, I made the decision to not go to work today and, and had informed my superiors with notice as my position is vital for operations. A few minutes later, my superiors and the CEO pulled me into meeting where, where they proceeded to attempt to guilt trip me and demand that I come into work. I told them my brother nearly died and is in the ICU. They said okay, I really need you to come in. I professionally tore them a new one, but agreed. In the following hour I got my old position. Old position back with a higher salary and an offer letter. My old boss? She asked me to file some paperwork for onboarding. When I told her I may have to complete it later on due to the fact that I'm in the hospital, she immediately asked me how my family was doing that she would expedite everything as soon as possible and for my focus to be on my family. What a difference human compassion makes. Anyways, like the good employee I am I will be happy to come in today in fact, I'll be coming. Coming in every day for the next two weeks and after that they'll need to find my replacement let's see how this goes. Calling me on a day off? Cha ching. This happened well over a year ago but X200B is a unionized employee I get every third Friday off. On my day off, I am playing some video games and get a text from the boss. I know it's your day off but. Whatever, that's easy to ignore, but then I get a second text, and after I ignore that I get a call. X200B boss I know it's your day off but our phones are down. Me no worries, I'll handle it. We hang up and I call our phone provider. I'm the IT and the contact there, and this isn't my first call ever to them so I literally have their service department saved in my phone. I call, 
I register the problem, and they say they'll look into it. I provide them my boss name and extension, and to call him when it's fixed. I then call my boss back and let him know that they'll call him ASAP. But now for the malicious compliance bit our contract stipulates a minimum call-in of 4 hours, meaning that you cannot pay me less than 4 hours for a day unless it is by my own choosing. If you call me in for an hour and send me home, I get 4 hours of pay. But wait, there's more. We also have an overtime clause that pays OT at 150. And lastly, we have a clause that says all OT must be approved by the boss, or else it is 1-1 toil time off in lieu which you can take at A11 ration. I.e., if I decide that the weekend is a good time for server updates, I don't need to ask for approval but my 2 hours of work only translate to 2 hours of paid time off elsewhere. X200B combine all this in one delightful batch and you get a 10 minute call that results in 6 hours of bank time off. X200B I went right back to my video games, filled out my timesheet the week after, and said I know it's your day off but is implied consent for overtime. Minimum call out of 4 hours at 150 is 6 hours. Almost an entire day off with pay in exchange for a 10 minute call? Thank you very much. X200B bonus guess who has 2 thumbs and has since then never been called on his day off? This unionized guy. Hint get unionized. Fight back. Edit didn't think this would take off like this. Of course anyone saying this isn't malicious is right. Sadly, we live in a world where a lot of people are expected to work beyond their scope. And while my experience should be normal it really isn't for a lot of people. The expectation my boss had, I presume, is that I'd write the 15 minutes down we write our time in blocks of 15 and be content with that. We all deserve A to be left alone during our time off and B to be compensated and compensated well if we are asked to give up time off to do a work thing. You work to live after all, not the other way around. To those asking what IT union I'm with I'm not in a special IT union. It's just a union with experience with office jobs. If you're interested in joining a union and don't know where to start, call any local union. A nurse's or plumber's union will gladly point you to the right place, if they can't help you themselves. More unionized workers are good for everyone, because we as a working class need to understand that we are all in this together. Change the salary system after start date? More than happy to comply. Here a little story about a summer job I did a while ago, that you all might enjoy this happened a few years back. It was during summer break and I was back home from university, looking for something to do to keep me busy and to earn some cash. I stumbled upon an ad for a local music festival needing help managing their concerts mostly checking in visitors and also working as a driver. I reached out, said I would be interested and tell them my hourly fee which I earned from my last job. They answered back rather quickly and told me to start ASAP. Since they didn't argue with me about my proposed hourly rate I gathered that they've accepted it. Well a few days after I started working for them one of the bosses approached me and said they don't exactly do the hourly rate but rather pay a fixed price for a day you worked for them. At first I was annoyed since it would have been much less than I initially thought I would earn but then I realized, I can just use their own system against them. Want me to go around and hand out flyers to people for 30 minutes? Yeah this will be noted as a whole day. Want me to go collect additional chairs and bring them to the venue for 20 minutes? Yep. Yeah. Another day added, you get my system by now. Ah that sweet sweet moment, when after the whole gig I handed my registered day's calculation to the boss. She looked at it, her eyes turned wide and you could see her thought process on her face calculating. I simply grinned while she realized that her system absolutely backfired with me and they played themselves. I ended up earning more than they would have paid me with the hourly system I proposed. One week later I had the money in my bank account. Weirdly enough I never heard back, would have loved to work with them again. Charge me a fee to pay online, enjoy your trip to the bank. The property manager for my app recently changed hands and the new company has a policy where if you don't set up auto pay they will charge you $10 to pay via a one-time ACH every time. I feel extremely uncomfortable having such a large payment on auto pay as I like to ensure my bank account is funded and they didn't charge me incorrectly. However, you can still pay by check with no fee and their office is only two doors down so it's pretty simple to drop it off. Also I love that it takes them around a week to cash the check so it doesn't come out of my account right away. I'm 90 sure that they do in fact drop these checks off due to the copy of the endorsed check I see online. Either way, they aren't getting their money instantly, so I view it as a win either way. If only everyone started paying by check again we could show these fuckers not to charge senseless, greedy fees. If there is a logical reason why they should charge for an ACH but not for an auto pay of an ACH let me know. To me seems like it is the same type of transaction. PLDR company charges a fee to pay rent via ACH so I treat them to a trip to the bank to cash my check and hang on to my money for an extra week. Cop keeps interrogating me on where I'm coming from? 
My pleasure. Disclaimer I am a woman and was polite otherwise, YMMV. When I was younger, I would visit natural parks. One time as I was driving home, a police officer pulled me over for alcohol testing. I politely complied yet the officer must have thought I was peddling drugs or something because he asked for a further drug test and started interrogating me. I told him that I came from the natural park, yet he was asking me the same question on repeat. Finally, I kept a cordial demeanor. Imagining myself as if I were talking to a co-worker and with the appropriate delivery, I went on a long monologue on how I enjoyed visiting natural parks, which road I took there, where I stopped for petrol, how much I paid for petrol, where I parked, which track I walked on, when did I decide to turn back on the track, which birds I saw on the track, the weather at the park, and so on. Finally, after a minute, he told me to shush and then let me go after the drug test came clear. I think some cops would have gotten more angry by this behavior but what worked for me was my genuine delivery. Do not attempt to log in until we confirm? Got it. A small malicious compliance, but it entertains me and means I get an easy morning. TLDR vital system not accessible. Told to not try to log in until we get confirmation. No confirmation is given. So, I'm due to start at 8am but it's comfy in bed. So I roll out at 8 a.m. when my alarm goes off. Ugh. Log into my laptop at 8 4 a.m. and start loading. Loading stuff up Teams, Outlook, Notepad, OneNote, Internet Explorer, etc. Notice that the ticket system we use is showing service unavailable. I refresh, clear cache and try again. Same error. So I check with my team and confirm. Confirm that another morning user is having the same issue. I then proceed to check with one of our first line team members who confirms there. They're having the issue and a ticket has been raised for it so it's just a waiting game. Fine by me. I can do some self-study Reddit browsing and any general home chores. Ultimately a major incident kind of ticket is raised, turns out. This is system wide and is affecting folk in multiple, various locations. At 10.20 am we get the following message from our manager from. From the major incident do not attempt to log in until we confirm. We need to restart servers due to the load of many uses attempting to access. Acknowledged. Boss. Of course, there's always one. One of my teammates comes into the chat. Chat at 10.56 am I've refreshed and it's taken me straight in. Can I start using it? Bear in mind dairy spin no confirmation. No email. No message. No chat update. Nothing. I point out this is what we were told specifically not to. To do. But colleague attempts to justify this with technicalities technically I didn't log in. To me refresh means to bring up the login page etc. The logic baffles me, but this is the type of person that, that always wants to be at the forefront and in the spotlight. Taking the attention, displaying his prowess and leadership. Look at how proactive and amazing I am and who needs unions to negotiate a pay. Pay rise, if we just accept this then next year we might all get what we want. Note that this last bit about the union and pay were his exact words. Anyways, it's 11.42 am right now. I've had nearly 4 hours of being paid for not, not working due to everything we do coming by our ticket system. On the one hand, technically it appears to be working. On the other hand, I have not as of yet received this confirmation that we can log in. So I guess I'll just continue to sit here until I do I wonder how long it will take to get this confirmation. I can't log until I do as a note. I'm due to be performing queue management and incident assignment today. So my job is checking any assigned tasks and ensuring that relevant details are present and that it's actually something we support before assigning this to a team member to work on. X200 BETA I've just had a one to one with manager which is something that was scheduled previous. Supposed to be once a month but doesn't always happen that frequently. Regardless, this was on the books for a couple of weeks. Anyway, she mentioned that the ticket system appears to be working somewhat but also stated that she didn't want to. To confirm that with all of us just yet, due to there being no official confirmation and not wanting to exacerbate issues. So she acknowledges that we're still not working. Working presently and she doesn't have an issue with it. She said she'll also continue to wait until, until it's officially confirmed as fixed and fully operational. Girl I met wanted book recommendations without gay side characters. So I was hanging out with my friend and her friend from high school. At some point, books came up in the conversation since we are all avid readers. We started recommending books to one another and, and I mentioned Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. The high school friend mentioned that she started reading the first book. Book but stopped because someone told her that there are gay side characters. This pissed me off but I brushed it. It aside and continued to recommend a few other books. Per her preference, I made sure the side characters were straight. However, since she didn't say anything about main characters, every single book that I recommended has a queer protagonist. Not queer-coded, not determined to be gay by fans, 
but fully out queer protagonists. Here are some of the books as well as some that were recommended on other subs The City Beautiful The Secret Life of Albert and Twistle Under the Whispering Door Being War Girl Mans Up Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe Edit The Girl Who Said She Doesn't Like Gay Characters Is Not Someone I Hang Out With We Were Both At A Mutual Friend's House And I Don't Plan Plan On Going Out Of My Way To Hang Out With Her Again it's us or grad school. I used to work for a company that advertises knights, horses, and real weapons. If you know you know. I was a follow spot operator, basically you point. You point the big light at the horsey man to highlight them. The company didn't seem to like hiring extra people for that position and in hindsight the turnover rate was pretty high. Plus pay was $10 an hour. This is all important. During my work there, I had had major surgery which, which out me out for two months requiring quitting and hiring back. That never seemed to be an issue. A few months after that I developed a preseptic bacterial infection 2A, a mild form of sepsis. My fever was 103, and my heart rate kept going up. I was sick. This necessitated me being out for a week. However, for some reason, I had to miss an extra night of, of work and forgot to call in, largely because my meds knocked me out. This was my bad. Again important. At the same time I'd been accepted into graduate school school, and had a class that met one Saturday a month. I was called into my boss's office to discuss the no-call, no-show. The conversation went as follows. Manager hey, op you did a no-call no-show. That's pretty bad. Me I'm sorry, I sent you an email and a doctor's note after, as soon as I could. I understand this is an issue though. Manager well, you've been written up for it, but that's, that's not what concerned me enough to call you in today. Mio, oh? manager you're asking for a Saturday off every month. That's our highest attendance day, we can't do that. Me I thought with enough advance notice you could schedule around me. Manager C, that's just the problem. We've had to constantly lean into your needs, and now it's, it's time for you to consider our needs, and your team's needs. Me what are you saying? Manager it's either us or this class. Me I need this class for full time attendance, I can't drop it. Manager smugly well. I guess we'll see where we are in two months. Me okay. I left his office and told my co-workers I like goodbye. Then I clocked out. He comes storming out to my truck screaming at, at me, asking how I could quit on him like that. I told him he wanted me to choose between grad school, grad school or this rinky dink job, and I made my decision. I then took off the costume belt and handed it to him, to him, saying I'd bring the rest back when I had time. A week later, I got my first real stagehand job that paid $20 an hour. So yeah. Fuck you dude. I have a masters now and I'm set to start. Start teaching at colleges this next semester, and I'm a pro stagehand. Never give your employees shitty ultimatums. Long do update. The title must fit the job. So, it's been a long time and I am astounded it took this long for everything to pile up and the way it did. Just like my first post I'm not sharing names of people nor the businesses I get treated very well and respected as an individual so I will do my part and keep from name calling. After I stopped helping other departments because my direct manager had written me an email telling me to only work on orders and transactions within my department, the other departments fell behind immediately. I'm talking about 12 hour days 5 days a week. And even then, they couldn't keep the work from piling up and drowning in parts and orders. To be clear I'm one of about 4 people who has complete access to every part of our inventory and op softwares, making the other departments work easier for me to do and keep organized. Without the software each order takes up much more time. Eventually the facility owner had come in for an unexpected visit and was flustered by the lack of productivity in both other departments in the warehouse. I had just escaped to my new position which was more comfy and had less responsibilities. I was propositioned about returning to help the sinking ship that was my former job. I declined politely stating, as long as old fart manager is still in that role, I choose to not return. Another month or so of work goes by and reviews are had in all sunshine and rainbows for me. I even got to the support role with my new manager being his exclusive intelligence into the inventory software. As no one before me knew how to use it or how to complete op stages or transfers, I got better pay than I already had. I was respected and made a ton of friends in the department that had my back 100. Sadly eventually it got the point where the warehouse was no longer delivering items to us or any other department because they were so heavily behind. They asked several times and I declined all of them as the manager had not changed. It got to the point where I worked 2 of my 10 hours a day and sat around talking the other 8 waiting for parts or tools to be brought by forklift. 
which would either never show up or show up at the end of the day. Then last Monday happened. I was called into a meeting along with all other people who had access to the inventory system and had been at this company for a while and they told everyone they were hiring temporary help for a while to fix the fuck up that had happened. They also explained that the manager that I had problems with decided to resign and they were going to fill his spot from within because they wanted someone that was intimate with the information. They hired a guy I thought should have been the manager from the start and he made leaps and bounds in the warehouse and caught up within the week of being in the new position. Things were looking up finally. He then called me into a meeting, and asked me to return to warehouse at double my current pay and I would be doing the same thing, but for the whole building. I would have a lot more on my plate but I would always be busy and work would feed itself to me through our software and I would work based on the orders fed directly to me. I accepted obviously. I no longer had to do an allotted amount of work for the day and help the whole building whenever the order came through. It's been amazing. I hope this wasn't too late to share the ending of what was a crazy couple months here military compliance. I was stationed aboard a ship during the first Gulf War. It was a nuclear-powered ship important later and, and so we had regular crew corpsmen, navigation, fire control etc. And then we had what was affectionately called fucking nukes. These were engineers and folks who ran the nuclear reactors. Everything was by the book for them, and they were, were either incapable of, or not allowed to think outside of regulation. Medical was a small department, so when we, had duty, there was only one corpsman on board. At 1907 pm we had to report for duty head muster where we had, had to report that our department was all secure to the duty officer of the day. So after one of these musters the commander who, who was in charge that day called me to his stateroom. He didn't like me anyway, so I figured he was, was just trying to make my life miserable for a while. He was a fucking nuke. I get to his stateroom, and there are a couple other fucking nukes there with him, and, he says petty officer, I've noticed that you always address me as commander and never by sir. I stood there for a moment trying to figure out where this was going. Finally he asked why. I took a moment to ground myself, looked him straight in the eye, and said well commander the UCMJ, uniform code of military just as clearly states that I must address you as sir or by your proper rank. The way I was raised, the title sir is reserved. For those you respect he just stared at me as I stood there. He then dismissed me. As I walked out the door I said over my shoulder, have a wonderful evening commander. Number picky? Okay, so where I work, we register cars and issue plates according to what we have in stock. It's a common question for people to come in and ask for specific number tags, tags, and normally if I have anything applicable, I'll try and accommodate as best as I can. Q entitled customer EC. EC comes in, hands me his paperwork for his car, and a temporary tag. I want a plate with these numbers. I go okay, I just restocked and I'm, 99 sure I don't have those specific numbers, man, nope, EC wants me to check for those numbers, I say no, we go by what we have in stock, he can check all up and down with all of my coworkers if they have a plate with those, those exact numbers, but it's slim pickings that anyone is going to have the exact number plate in their drawer, he quiets down while I work his paperwork up, are you sure you don't have those numbers, even if, it's not the same sequence, I just want those numbers, sir, I can assure you, I do not have those specific numbers. Sign here, please. Yeah, but it's just an important number for me. Are you? Can't check? I just restocked my drawer. I don't have those numbers. Okay. I finish up with the paperwork. Start typing. Get to the very end and tell him what his. His total is that we take cash, card, check, money order, etc. Plate is already picked out. Okay, but are you so or you don't? Those numbers? I'm fed up at this point. I've been lenient with the five times you asked. Buddy, you want me to search? Fine. I pop open my drawer and go through the first rack of plates. This is a pretty hefty stack, enough to make a solid thump on my desk. Let's take a look, huh? Oh no, you don't need to do no, I insist. I go through them one by one. Nope, not that one. Not that one either. Ooh, that also doesn't have the right numbers. Wow. By the time I'm done, EC is saying okay, I'm ready to pay, but I completely turned. Billy Mays here and was like but wait. Darius Moore and grabbed the second stack of plates. It must have felt like watching Jimmy and Stick of Truth. Truth during the unskippable flute scene, because we were not skipping any single plate. EC eventually got the hint that I didn't have his specific plate because he paid and left saying it was a cultural thing for good luck. I feel like a bit of an awe there, but I'm not an Etsy artist. I don't do custom orders. What we have is what we have. Religious workplace wouldn't give me time off for my grandma's death. This was a few years ago but I'm still salty about it.
I was doing out of school care with kids. I also knew my grandma's health was going downhill. I informed my work in the near future I would need to take some time off and drive the 12 hours to my hometown to see my family. I got a call a few weeks later that the time was coming and I needed to go say my goodbyes. I told my work at first they were fine. Then when I was in my hometown my grandmother passed away. I was very close with her and I took it very hard. My work told me I get my three unpaid days off and have to come back after that. Now keep in mind, this is a childcare company that values religion and family, blah blah blah. I told them I was not mentally ready to come back, I didn't want to deal with all the kids questions, and even when you try to hide your sadness, they know. They are so smart. So I went to a walk-in clinic explained my situation to my doctor who was beyond pissed that she even needed to write a note for me to take time off. I told her a week should be fine. She said I'll write two weeks just in case. Emailed a copy of the doctor's note to my work and took the full two weeks. They were so salty after I came back. Don't sit there and praise your amazing values when you don't have basic human decency. Relocate our office space. See how that works out for you. This one is a small victory, but was super satisfying for me so I wanted to share. I worked for a large international accounting firm with offices all over the country. Our boss Karen was well liked until she became the boss. A smiling assassin type who only cared about her. Her position and looking good in front of the higher ups. All about the numbers even if what we had to had to do to get to those numbers didn't make sense. So here's the story. My team about 12 were primarily based in the London office but once a week per for my contract and everyone else's were required to work in a remote office ages from London. This place was miserable. A building in the middle of nowhere. One tiny corner shop for snacks. Next to a motorway. The closest place to eat was a 15 minutes drive away. We all hated it. But hey ho. It was only once a week. Anyway, when our boss got promoted her sole life mission was to cut costs. Everything from stopping overtime to telling us we had no stationary budget for pens and had to take from other team's stores to allowing, allowing only one meal on social drinks and making comments at the meal when someone chose theirs to be the more expensive option e. G are you really choosing that? It's expensive. I'm not sure we are going to have enough budget. This is considering all other teams went for, for large fancy dinners all the time unlimited drinks etc. At one point she decided that the miserable location should be our primary office and she wanted us all to go there four days a week instead of one. All but one of our team were living in London. This meant for me, a two, five hours journey one way instead of one hour. After a few months this really took its toll. The assistant manager a friend of mine told me she said in passing to him, him that this office was less of a cost on our team budget than the London office. What a shock. I decided to speak to HR and see what my options are maybe get an exception? Well, turns out we had a, a policy that anything over your normal travel hours to the closest office location to your home could be used as your working hours, aka, the extra one, 5 hours each way would be considered working hours. So I could arrive at 10, 30 instead of 9 am and leave at 4 instead of 5, 30 also, if trains and things were delayed or, cancelled. That would also be included in working hours. This happened often as this place was the middle of nowhere, in frequent trains. So I was often arrive at 11. 30. I forwarded the emails with HR to her and, and explained how I would be complying with this policy. She agreed, but tried in a meeting to tell me this was, was an exception for me. And to not tell anyone else. Well. I told everyone else. And we all begun complying with the policy. This meant we spent less time in the office and productivity dwindled. She mentioned this a lot in meetings. I would often respectfully point out that it didn't make sense. Sense to force us to travel to this office and its effects. I was the main one speaking up about this. At some point maybe a few months later, she told me I could go to 5 days in the London office but again. This was, was a special arrangement for me and that she appreciated me and was making accommodations only for me. She also said she would tell everyone I had special circumstances, circumstances that allowed me this arrangement and to keep our conversation confidential. I honestly think she just got fed up with me pointing out how our, our productivity is lower only because she made us travel there four days a week. Of course I complied but the team noticed, noticed I wasn't with them and let's just say, it caused a bit of a riot. I didn't say anything but they figured it out themselves no special circumstances here. Slowly but surely one after the other, my colleagues started joining, joining me in London getting their own special arrangements with her. At some point the majority were in London. Eventually it was just her and the only other, other local colleague at this office while we were in London. We all had a good chuckle about when she would cave. It took a good few weeks. Then we got the email that our permanent location going forward would be London 5 days a week. We can the one local employee to the terrible office would work from home and come in once a month. It may have happened anyway but I'd like to think that me speaking to HR and finding that policy at least had a hand in getting us moved back to London. As for Karen, 
I could go on about so many stories with, with her but I did eventually leave for other reasons directly related to her. Unfortunately she is still in the same position at that company. I do however enjoy seeing her checking my LinkedIn profile from time to time and hopefully, hopefully noticing that since I left I have gone from a junior to the same position as her. Smiley face. Show me what's in your pants okay. This story was just told to me by my amazing Haitian grandma. She's not the greatest at speaking English so some of this might have been a little lost in translation. Translation we were listening to r slash and the topic of periods came up and how some people are low-key uneducated. I was telling her stories about how some girls weren't allowed to go to, to the bathroom by male teachers even on their periods and she told me this gem. She said that she was in the DR, for vacation and was shopping at a store. Now, she said was bigger than she is, is now and that she was wearing a skirt. She was, of course, on her period and was wearing a pad. It apparently was poking out the front a little. The store clerk had told the women to come to, to the front and had maybe noticed the bulge on my grandma. The interaction went something like this SC. What are you hiding I'm your pants? G nothing. Question mark SC ma'am. I can see you smuggling something. I'm going to have to call security if you don't. Me right now G ok called in the store clerk obliged and call security. They came shortly after and talked to my grandma s ma'am. What are you hiding? G I already said. Anything s you're lying show me at this point. Grandma was getting fed up and just decided to follow his instructions. She pulled on her underwear and ripped that. That shit off and placed it on his hand. Blood exposed and all the man apparently was appalled. Appalled and screamed e w w w w t f. WTF is that and starting screaming. Other customers had come and questioned why they would. Would think she could smuggle something in a skirt lamau. Grandma just paid for her shit and left like the boss she is. Strong arming me into a viewing? Fine, but you won't get inside the apartment. I'm renting an apartment from a company, whose renting agents are somehow all unprofessional, late, and kinda slow. Had a plethora of issues with them throughout 10 months, but that's a story for another time as I've told my landlord I'll be moving out. They instructed their agents to find a new tenant for the apartment. The way it worked, the agent would email me with a proposed date and time, and I would confirm that I'll be in at that time I've got a cat so I insisted on being present during the viewings. The agents never had keys I think that's because the landlord's office is at the other end of the city, and they can't be bothered to drive an extra hour each time there's a viewing to pick the keys up, and then drop them off. So they relied on me to let them in each time apart from a couple of unannounced show-ups, followed by passive-aggressive emails about the messy property. All was well until a week ago. The agent emails me saying they've got a viewing on the 13th. I respond saying I've got work that day, and won't be able to do 13th. She simply replies if you won't be able to accommodate this request, I'll ask the landlord for a 24-hour notice of entry, which is legally enforceable. Okay, do that the day comes, I get a call. We're downstairs, congratulations, but I'm not home. I hope you brought keys this time man I wish I could see her face then. We went back and forth a bit. She tried to threaten me with legal action, to which I just replied that I don't object to them entering, they're unable to enter through their own negligence, and I have nothing to do with it naturally got an email from the landlord asking me to be more cooperative next time, which was promptly ignored. Tell you my every move. Sure thing, newish to reddit but love this sub. Hope this fits. Way back when I worked for a large downtown big name hotel at the front desk. I was cross trained in many parts of the hotel and, and knew the city well so I was efficient and loved people. I'd been working there for a while and everyone loved me from guests to managers. I had won a few awards for my, my service to guests and always went above and beyond. At some point, we get this manager. A, who is a transfer from the West Coast and thinks he is going to micromanage his way to a promotion. When things are slow at the desk, we take turns going on breaks or whatever. I particularly like to walk guests to their elevators if I had to, to put them in the second building because it was so confusing to explain. Sure there were the occasional longer breaks, but my coworkers didn't. Didn't mind as long as the work got done and guests didn't complain. At some point quickly after he arrives, he decides that by now, means can I specifically me leave the front desk without letting him know. Oh yeah? Q malicious compliance newish to reddit but love this sub. Hope this fits. Decided to check in guests on the line with us. There was no reason, it wasn't busy and it was a low forecasted day. Anyway, I wrote on a post bold enough so he could read it, going to remove my tampon. Tampon. Would you like to come? I stuck it on his monitor while he was checking in his guests. His face turned beet red and he crumbled the note. I walked off and the next day my bigger boss A's boss, boss and I had a chuckle in his office while he reprimanded me. It was a win for 19 yo me. Adult me would have hated to manage me. LOL. You want me to go out? As you wish. Okay this is a small act, compared to so many others, but it holds a special place in my heart, as it was the first time I dared to maliciously comply with an order. I think I discussed it in a comment long ago. 
But here it goes. It was during fourth grade, and the whole classroom had been misbehaving. Cannot remember why, for the life of me, but our math teacher was pissed. A common punishment in our school, when the entire, entire class was wrong, was to take away our recess. And it was heavily implied this was our fate this day. Forty students all remained, sitting in our chairs, no books, no games, no food, no talking, while everyone else outside could be heard enjoying their recess hour. To be fair, he was a decent teacher and the class generally liked him. But, but apparently he was pissed enough that he wanted to twist the knife a bit further. He sat at his desk, and looked at us angrily, while we listened to the sounds of the other students. Then he said to us, well, does anyone want to leave? Anyone that wants to leave, go ahead. No one moved. We were not meant to. And I sat by the window, looking at everyone else playing, eating, talking. And with my legs shaking, not looking, looking at the teacher at all, I stood up, and left the room without comment. I went to buy my lunch, and a minute later, later, I saw student after student leaving the classroom as well. Next day, the teacher looked at me a bit resentfully, but said nothing. I never got into trouble. I would have had the testimony of 40 kids. Kids who all heard the teacher say to get out. You wanted her to make a Christmas list, so she made one. I've been listening to malicious compliance stories for a while. Now, and I was inspired to post one of my own. This is a short and sweet little story that, that my dad likes to remind me of around the holidays. For some background I was 9 years old when this happened. My dad's side of the family will travel to my grandparents' house for Thanksgiving. We would often have our Christmas wish lists ready by this time. And when Christmas would come around, we would, would meet back up at my grandparents and exchange gifts. The thing is, I'm really bad at coming up with gift ideas, whether it's for others or for me. So I hadn't come up with anything when the time came to exchange wish lists. My dad noticed this, so he and my grandma approached me to request a list. So, I complied, maliciously. I wrote down a list of things that little me wanted. I can't remember remember everything that I put down because it, it was 12 years ago, but I do remember a few. While some of the items were normal things that a, a 9 year old girl would want, I also had a few more. Exotic requests, wolf, tiger, dolphin, dragon, and many more. There's no way that they or anyone else in my family could have gotten of those. Once I finished, I handed the list over to my dad. Needless to say, he was pretty shocked when he read through it. But my grandma was able to appreciate my, my little malicious compliance replying with the title looking back on it i think it's hilarious how sassy i was and even after all that i still suck at making my own christmas lists 